Um, so uh, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Alex, for inviting me to present. Um, I have 15 minutes. And there is a lot of information about AI and automation that I could talk about. I'm going to focus mostly on AI so people feel that you know, you've gained some more information. At the very least, you feel more comfortable with the use of AI, hopefully. Um, Abri Suite is um, our business. Um, Ray is my business partner. Um, we have been in the market since 2019 but we've been in technology for over 20 years. We have a large network of partners, and we've done a lot of different types of technology services. Um, over time, our clients uh, had a common problem, which was uh, lack of integration between their systems, and how do they eliminate manual tasks, how they can grow and be more efficient, and any company that has been in business for a minimum of five to six years will have that same issue. They will be using several platforms. They don't know how to connect the platforms. They lose track of the data and what is the real data, where is the source of data that they should be using, and they cannot make uh, decisions uh, in real time. So we evolved our services into providing integrations and as technology evolved, we added automation, and now with AI and ChatGPT, it makes it much easier for business owners to take advantage of what's available. And it's not expensive. Um, when I talk about AI and automation, people look at me, oh, I don't think my business can do that. And then I say, no, actually, it can, because there is a plethora of technologies out there and one of the services we provide is really advisory. So we help your business find the right technology for the right price. So just let's talk a little bit about AI. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to walk you through a little bit of you know, history of AI. Everybody thinks that AI is this cool new tool that you know, just came up, just popped up with ChatGPT. But in reality, it's been around for a very long time. And ChatGPT is just a realization of a lot of effort and funding and research that has been put into AI since 1950. And we also have a lot of myths being spread out across you know, social media mostly about AI and people scared of having their jobs replaced. Um, you know, maybe the day that we have walking robots with AI brains, I can't promise you won't have your job replaced, but we're very far away from that. And right now, if there is no human interaction, AI models are good for nothing. Um, what are the components and technologies that are more, most common used in AI? The challenge of scaling operations in your business, benefits, how we can use our AI and automation in practice, and what tools you can start using today and how you can overcome these challenges. Okay, so let's go on to history. Welcome, I'll go move on to history. <laughs> okay, so AI is really just a branch of computer science that aims to make computers act and behave like human beings. So they are programmed and these programs use algorithms to understand patterns and to understand natural language and to understand data and process data in a very high velocity. Why couldn't AI be developed in 1970, even though people are talking about it? Because there was no technology. There was no speed of computers. There was no chips as we have today. We have very powerful computers in our phones today. That's why some of the apps that you have on your phones today, they have AI, they have machine learning. You have Alexa or Google Dot at home, that's machine learning, they're always listening, right? So that's why it's so popular and powerful and possible today, it's because of the availability and the price of hardware, right? Um, so, but the idea, and I put that picture in there because the idea is in legends from the Greek and the Romans, actually. They had legends about the gods having these intelligent machines, or the gods had, that they had robots 
that were their pets and they were intelligent and they could actually use the help of those robots to um, hurt the humans, I suppose. <laughs> but it's been um, talked about forever. Leonardo da Vinci had contraptions that he believed could be intelligent. And he it was in Florence in the 16th century. But the event of um, intelligent machines really came about in 1956. That was the advent of the giant IBM computer. And the IBM computer would probably take over this whole space at the time. But people could dream, right? They dreamt of flying cars, and they dreamt of a future where computers could talk, and they could recognize voice, and they could do a lot of things. But it wasn't until the 70s that they started, you know, the technology improved a little bit, and they started creating some smart systems. Um, but there was no funding, very little interest. You know, there was, the United States was in a war with the Vietnam, and there was a lot happening around the world, Cold War, and people are now investing in technology. But in the 2000s, machine learning became a thing, right? So uh, up until then, all systems are just structural systems, right? You, you write a query, you bring data, and your algorithm just shows you that. It doesn't learn anything from your data. So with machine learning, you started feeding data information to the algorithm, and the algorithm started giving you insights and learning from your data and providing information that you didn't have before. Um, and then in 2010s, that's when deep learning started. But that's really when ChatGPT was born. That was about 13 years ago, right? So it's nothing new. Um, the idea of ChatGPT, the learning model, the algorithm, was born then. So after a lot of investment and a lot of money and billions of dollars, then you have ChatGPT today and other models that are similar and everyone wants to compete for a piece of the pie um, because this is now the time that humans have the ability to interact with computers if it was a human. You don't have to know how to write a query. You don't have to know a line of programming. You just ask the model, write this program for me, create a website for me. How about you create a little story for my daughter? Put pictures on it too, you know? And then the model will talk to you and interact and spit something out. But the fact that that happens, it doesn't mean it's the right information that you should always trust. I posted on LinkedIn uh, not too long ago a uh, New York Times article about a lawyer that used ChatGPT to create their court filing. And ChatGPT made up a bunch of cases. And so when the lawyer took that to court, um, his client actually lost the lawsuit against the airline because those cases didn't exist and the lawyer was disbarred. Now why did that happen? Because they didn't fact check. So sometimes we do a presentation and we ask ChatGPT to do things for us and we see that it's making things up. And then you tell him, but you made this up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's all he'll tell you. So you take responsibility, right? Um, so basically, uh, the popularity is because of the way that computers are interacting with us. There is a lot of applications. Like I said, ChatGPT is just one of them. Um, everyone, everywhere, every day is uh, interacting with AI or machine learning. So when you get you know, your preferred movie on Netflix or any streaming uh, channel, when you get suggestions of what you're gonna buy on Amazon, all of that in machine learning and, and AI. Uh, even when you are applying for a mortgage, the bank is using AI to make sure that you actually can qualify for a mortgage and to give you an answer like that. Um, so where is it going? We don't know. But what we know is that if you don't adopt it, like if you didn't adopt the internet, if you didn't use Google for searching, then you wouldn't be here today. <laughs> so that's what we know. Adopt it in any way you can. And that's, and what I'm trying to say is uh, not trying to make a sales pitch here, but it's 
just because we are recommending this to all our clients, just start with ChatGPT, just use a tool that can help you create a post for your marketing, just become comfortable with it, and then take advantage of it because it will cut down the time that it takes for you to be productive. And it will cut down the time of most of your tasks. We've been using ChatGPT since it came out. Mm -hmm. Second day, actually, before there was a paid <laughs> subscription. Um, and to this day, ChatGPT has cut down tremendously the amount of time that it takes us to put proposals together. Just because it helps us with critical data that we can then just re review and finalize and format, right? Instead of doing all the thinking from scratch. So that is really powerful. And it can be powerful for any business. And it costs 20 bucks a month, right? Um, so I believe that AI has a lot of potential still, and there will be a lot of new things coming. And it can even help, hopefully, save the planet. There is a lot of applications that companies are creating today to monitor emissions in factories, to uh, monitor uh, you know, like output of equipment that's supposed to help and clean the air. So there is a, a lot that's happening behind the scenes that we're not even aware right now. Next. So what are the myths? AI will replace everyone's jobs. That's the myth. And I say that's a myth right now, like I said, until we have robots walking on the street that I can, I don't know, but we are not there. So right now, if a human does not interact with ChatGPT or any of these models, you just don't have a proper output. And why? It, because they are relying on patterns, they are relying on data that they are taking out from the internet. They don't have emotion, they don't have feelings, they don't have EQ. And if your job has EQ today, you're not gonna be replaced. What job will be replaced? Maybe if you just do manual tasks every day, just data entry, then maybe you'll be replaced. Um, you know, if you're doing just report creation, uh, or if you're doing, you know, like what I say, broad customer services, like picking up the phone, answering, and passing it along to another department, right? So those things, or if you're following just a checklist on telemarketing jobs, those things will likely be replaced eventually. But if your job has creativity, emotion, interaction, connection, AI cannot replace that, not yet. Um, so you can print money with AI, that's not true. <laughs> um, yes, ChatGPT will tell you anything, will make up anything. You can be an author overnight. But the truth is, is it good and is it true? No. If you don't have these skills, if you're not an author already, if you're not a creator already, ChatGPT is not going to make you be that overnight, right? So yeah, there may be some things you can do faster. So, okay, I'm an author, I wanna finish my book, that would take me two years to finish, I can finish six months, wonderful. So maybe I can be published sooner, right? So that is helpful. Um, and you cannot become just about anything because of ChatGPT, right? Again, you have to have the skills, you have to learn. But ChatGPT will tell you where the sources of information that are free or low cost for you to learn to be something if you want to upscale. So as I said, um, you can start learning today, right? You can go into LinkedIn, there are several uh, courses. If you're a premium subscriber of LinkedIn, you have courses for free about artificial intelligence. Um, there is tons of information, tons of influencers, follow people, you can learn a lot every day about artificial intelligence. It's here to stay. And it's really about productivity. So just use it any way you can. So you're not, your business is not behind, you're not replaced. Even if you're just a consultant, an employee, just use it in any way you can. There are companies today that are actually asking people to know ChatGPT so they can be hired, just so you have an idea. And ChatGPT was out last December. It's not even a year old yet. <laughs> um, next. 
So what are the key components of AI? So AI works so well because it has algorithms that learn to recognize patterns and make decisions, right? So Netflix, personalized based on watching, reasoning, logical problem solving. So it's all, uh, the logical problem solving is much faster than a human would do. And the data uh, processing and the volume of data that it can process is much larger and it's much faster than a human can do. Uh, and it self-corrects, right? So we call it out, you say, sorry, don't do it again, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but it will learn with interaction. So what is everybody doing on ChatGPT today? We're all training the model. That's all, that's what we are doing. So it's gonna become better and better. We're all working, actually not for free, we're paying to work for OpenAI and any other model, so they get all that information. That's the other thing that's very important that you think about when you're working with ChatGPT, don't put confidential data from your business in open AI. We don't have a model right now that's available uh, where you can put confidential data in. It's possible that open AI may have some more, yes? Oh, they just came out with it? Uh, right. Yes. So the private models is something that you could create for yourself, but this, those would be very expensive. So for the short term, unless you have 10,000 a month from your business to put into ChatGPT, don't put confidential data in there. Um, and the key technologies, so they are machine learning, natural language processing, and computer vision, right? So um, I'm not sure if everyone is uh, familiar here with these technologies. Uh, but if you have any questions specifically, I can answer those questions. I don't want to bore the audience with technologies. But machine learning is really about data processing. And natural language processing is what ChatGPT does, right? Which is processing a human command, a data entry. And computer vision is really to interpret visual data, right? A lot of these models are creating pictures now. They're creating websites but they're still not finalized product. It's getting better though. So if, you know, people that um, do design or cartoons and things like that for a living, those jobs could be at risk as things progress and the images that AI creator are more, uh, I guess, more consumed and they look better or they look almost the same as of a creator. So next. Um, so what is the challenge of sca scaling operations today? So that's what I mentioned in the beginning. Today, there are so many technologies. And then you have AI on top of it, and then it's like everything's moving so fast, and it's confusing, right? So even if you're a small business, and you have minimal technology, um, you're still gonna be dealing with manual processes. and how do you scale your operations? How do you automate your operations so you don't have to think about the small and administrative tasks? So I'm gonna give a simple example. Um, the CRM, if you have a CRM, and your financial system, right? And your website. So just those three basic things that every business has to have. Um, what do you do? How do you integrate them? How do you get your leads that come to your, from your website into your CRM? How do you actually create a deal and follow the customer journey and then know that the payment's gonna end up on your financial system without having to download data from the website, upload it into the CRM, you know, create all the data entry into the CRM, then create the invoice, put in the QuickBooks or other system, <laughs> we use QuickBooks, but you know, like how are you not gonna spend time with that, right? And that's just a basic thing. Now if your business has five or six employees and you have, let's say 50, 100 clients, and then you're dealing with client requests, lots of emails, how is your team collaborating, right? 
How are they taking care of the client deliverables? Um, you can get to a point where everything is manual, you have a lot of emails, you're not collaborating as you should, and you cannot take in more clients. And then what do you do, right? So we have challenges today that most businesses go through because there is so much technology available and because that technology is not integrated and it's not automated. So how can AI and automation help with that? Next. So basically, um, the benefits are obvious, right? So you can increase efficiency. Um, there, you know, I'll, I'll uh, talk about um, a simple platform that's called Zapier. Zapier uh, was created to integrate uh, systems that don't have APIs, right? So a lot of systems have to have APIs today because there are now technologies that allow you to integrate systems without API. So we probably know that some ERPs, right, like some bigger businesses that have inventory, even e-commerce businesses, they have HR, they have financial, they need ERPs. And this, a lot of the older ERPs, they didn't have APIs. Why? Because the vendors did not want to give the data away. They wanted to charge the business owner to do a very expensive service, to spit out some reports, <laughs> so the business owners would have the data that way. But now, with these technologies in the market, what can businesses do? They can actually map data out of the ERP just from the screens, and they can transfer that data over to a front-end system and they can take one report as opposed to 10 reports that they have to manually enter on the front end system. So now, if you wanna compete in the market, you need to have APIs. Zapier is, has made a lot of money because they solved a simple problem, which was actually a really big problem that was costing businesses a lot of money. Now there are so many other platforms that you can use and they're cheaper than Zapier, they're in the market, and you can do that. You can integrate your systems. It speed up your process, right? Pay less. Don't do data entry manually. Don't hire that person, or if you do have a person doing data entry, just I'm sure they're gonna be really good to do something else that your business needs instead of just doing manual data entry. So that's how you can start reducing costs, improving efficiency, and how can AI help? AI can help in report writing, for example. Um, we came across one of our clients that was taking, I think they have 200 clients, and they have five management people, and each person was taking three hours a week to write a report because they have 200 clients. So it's all manual. They get data from a spreadsheet. They download the data. They format the report all pretty and all, and they send it out three hours per person. Then, with ChatGPT, that report, formatted and pretty and all, is done in five minutes. So what could those people do with those three hours a week per person? Can you imagine how much money she's getting back? She doesn't have to hire someone else to do a different job. She has their time now to do something else and help her with strategy. These folks are management people, right? So those are the things that AI can do, and this is an integration with ChatGPT because ChatGPT has APIs. Um, in automation itself, there is RPA nowadays as well. It's a similar technology that can read data from screens and bypass data to different screens, like similar to what Zapier does. Zapier maps fields from one screen to another. RPA is like a little robot. It will come and read everything. You read a spreadsheet, extract data from a spreadsheet, save on a database, and it will do that automatic, automatically for you. Right? So these are the kinds of technologies that are available today. So if you want a solution, for example, you can start thinking like that. Where do I spend most of my time? So I want, I, I started my business because I'm great at something, right? 
So I, I, we started our business because we think we're great in technology. So, but where do I spend most of my time now? Not doing what I'm great at, but doing data entry, downloading spreadsheets, uploading spreadsheets. Where does it go? So I start documenting that. Actually make a list and see how much time that takes, right? So go for a whole week or if you have different events happening throughout the month, document for a month and then see where you end up and see how much time you're spending on things that you shouldn't be spending. If you have anything more than 10 hours of your time a week that you're spending on manual tasks, you should seriously consider some sort of solution. And sometimes you may have a lot of manual processes, but you can start with one. You don't have to automate everything at once. Actually, we recommend not to, because if you have employees, it's even harder. Because people are used to a certain cadence and certain you know, operational process, and that's gonna change. So you don't wanna change everything at once. So yes, but you know, like the, the results are fantastic, like every one that we work with automation, even if it's just a one manual process, integrating AI into their operations, people will you know, like have ROI in less than six months, they will save more than 20% in cost, um, they will not necessarily have to hire someone else, they can use savings to upskill their employees, there's so much that can be done. Um, so these are some examples, right? So um, logistics, a uh, shipping company that use AI-powered software to optimize their shipping routes, and this resulted in 10% reduction in fuel costs. So just by analyzing the data on the traffic and the routes for the delivery, they actually were able to cut down the costs in fuel and also um, make employees happier and more engaged because now instead of driving so much longer, I can drive less and I can do my job faster so I feel better about myself, right? Um, and healthcare, right? Now AI powered systems are enabling doctors to make better decisions. And many times they're making the decisions for them, which is a bit scary. <laughs> um, we, we actually, we're in a situation once um, where the doctor had to run to their system to <laughs> ask a question. <laughs> um, yeah, because they couldn't diagnose the problem that we were experiencing. But, you know, aside from that, it's a good thing that there is a system where they can rely on and get more information because all that data about the human body and all that's happening in medicine today, you know, it's hard to process for human beings. So, next. And I guess the challenges, the main challenges today with AI is exactly that. How do you address the fear, your own fear, or your employee's fear of being replaced? Um, I think it's important to tell people that it's easy to upskill. You can find different things to do inside of the business. Um, you as an employer cannot and do not need to spend a ton of money teaching these folks, right? It's something that's organic today with social media, with so much information, people can learn anything they want. And um, you have to provide reassurance and go slow, right? So if you have many manual processes, the ideal thing to do is to go one at a time. And the other challenge is bias in AI, AI algorithms. Um, I can't recall the name, but I know there is a developer creating the other GPT or something like that. They, so they are trying to bypass the restrictions that OpenAI is imposing on ChatGPT. So if you ask ChatGPT to help you build a bomb, you know, to drop it in downtown Toronto, then it's gonna say, sorry, I can tell you that. Um, you know, and then if you go to other GPT and you can say, build me a bomb to drop it out, then it will tell you how to build a bomb, right? So that's a problem, of course. But then that's not an AI problem. <laughs> it's a human problem, right? I mean, for, since the time of the Romans and the Greeks in ancient China, 
there were bad actors, there are bad actors today. So what do you do, right? You have to use algorithms, either build your own if you want to build a specific solution for your business, or you have to rely on companies that are ethical, right? They're building models that are ethical. But you have to be careful because the bad actors can also you know, influence your lives or your employees' lives or your family lives by you know, trying to use AI for better ways to create ransomware, right? So just watch out for those emails. We've been getting lots of those and we have very strong filters. Emails that look really uh, that came from someone you know, that came from a company you know, just really watch for the email address. But nowadays it's much easier with AI to create emails faster that look like a human person wrote it. So be careful with that. Bad actors are everywhere. And this is one of the things that, you know, like the big guys and the big companies are putting money behind to ensure that AI is ethical and continues to be ethical over time as it evolves. So um, personally, I'm not afraid of Terminator or Skynet. <laughs> I don't think we're ever gonna be in that situation because AI will evolve so much they'll realize that humans should die. It's like, you know, I don't believe that will happen because we, have, we do have controls in society, not as much as the movies show. Um, next. So tools you can start using today, right? ChatGPT is free. If you want to pay, it's 20, $23, I believe. Jasper is really good to write faster and better it's for creators, for posts, social media. Copy is also copywriting, and you will be, it's even more creative than Jasper, I find. Uh, Grammarly is great for fixing what you're writing. Um, all this, these tools, they have free models. Um, some of them you can do a lot free for free, others not so much, uh, but you can always get something for free. Um, the script is really good for video editing. We haven't been using the script yet, but we're looking into it right now. And Zapier, as I said, is really uh, for automation and mapping of fields between applications. And Notion um, is note-taking, but it's also great for project management because it has the Kanban boards, you know, like the agile development. So it's, it's a great tool for collaboration as well. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> They'll list all of the applications categorized them. So if you need something for any given function, you can go in and list it. There's so many AI tools now that can give you a list. Yes. Of everything is ranked, things ratings. Yes. So rather than just relying on this, this is a tiny, tiny subset. It's a very tiny subset. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, we partnered together, so. They contact uh, Alex. Um, so the next uh, one um, is just a conclusion. So thank you so much. I know it's a lot of blabber, but <laughs> I appreciate your time. Um, you know, AI is just another technology and it is intelligent, but it's not human. It'll never be human. So, you know, we still need human interaction, we still need connection, we still need emotional intelligence, we still need all of that that AI doesn't have. And I think it's really a fantastic tool to improve business operations and improve your, everybody's lives. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you.